Welcome back, everybody. Thank you very much for showing up again. We're just continuing on with the rear of the Quattro, or the A2 Quattro, the rally car. What we've got to do now is we have to put the rear bumper on. It's not as cut and dry as, uh, as you would think it would be, because we've got to do a couple things with the rear bumper. That's the problem. And we're trying to, you know, minimize the weight, especially, you know, weight hanging out here. But what we did before was we rough, we had, we started going moving backwards, which means we had to put the floor pan or the pans in for the trunk. And the pans in for the trunk basically made us sections where we can put the fuel pumps and the battery and so forth. We're going out and we're going to continue to move outwards to actually put the bumper on. Then we got to move back inwards. That's the thing. It, you know what? It's confusing. Even to me, it's confusing. But you know, you have to move out and in to start fitting everything because certain things depend on certain other things, and it's all in step process. You know, because once you get one step, you move to another step, then go back and do this step because this step determines. Says this step determines this step. You know, I, I'll just sit there and ramble on for hours. You know, and. And I don't want to do that. So let's get right onto it. I'm going to show you what I, my, what I'm trying to do with the bumper and how I'm going to mount it. Here is the rear bumper. This is the uh, sport wheel or cool wheels, cool wheels bumper. That uh, doesn't matter. And all it is is a shell. For the amount of money that you pay for it, it's not. I mean, it's hey, it, it's roughly what it's supposed to be. There we go. Pretty much it. Um, don't know what else to say. They give you no mounting points. They give you nothing. So we have to mount everything on there. And my hope, my own goal is I don't want bolts showing in the back of the bumper. I want to try and hide, hide them up top and down the bottom. So that will be fitted to this. This right here is an old skid plate bar that I had on my first Rally Quattro. Uh, back in the 90s, and I remember when I sold the car, I didn't sell it. I don't, no, I didn't sell it with the skip plate, so I took it off. What we're planning on doing is using this as a bumper mount and also the bottom part of a tow hook. This is, this, bear with me, bear with me. Here is the bumper. As you can see, there's a ridge. It's in a, it's in a basically a circular pattern. It's curved. And what we got here is the inch and a half, inch and three quarter, that's probably inch and three quarter, 95 wall tubing for a roll, roll cage tubing that I use for the skip plate mount. If you take a look, it goes right in here and just fits flush. So be very little amount of tabs. And what I plan on doing, let me uh, go over to here. And this is the bottom of the bumper. I already marked it with a, with a margin marker. So it is going to be going through the body. And these things will go through the body, but it's going to be resting right here and resting on the bumper. So that'll be the bottom part. And the reason why I'm going to use this big bar right there is I'm going to use this tubing to go through here, attached to the actual main uh, box frame that holds the subframe there, and that's going to be my tow hook or my mount for the tow hook. <laughs> There's something, you know, when you have to, you have to think of these things because generally I want to, you know, with this bar, it's also going to be braced and I'm going to show you how to brace it and I'm going to brace it up to the strut towers because for some reason, <laughs> when rodent talent run out, like I said before, you're either going to go in nose, side, or end. And I've been in end first a couple times, ended up on some stone walls. And, <laughs> you know, it's just like, well... We got to pull it out somehow, and you got to make your tow hook strong enough to get yourself pulled out. If I can find it, I'm going to show a picture of them pulling my car out, my Audi out of uh, a crash I had at the Mount Washington Hill Climb. I think it was 1996, and they had to actually pick it up, and it was vertical on the rear tow hook. It was hilarious. If I can find that picture, I'll post it now. Uh, <laughs> let's get on to cutting up, you know, some holes in the body and how I am going to uh, make this thing, make this bar sit inside and actually utilize it to make the rear bumper fit. What I want is it to be roughly centered and it's going to come down. This is where it's going to turn in and it should be passed. Let's 
where we want it to go. What will happen is in the back down here, uh, where these open mounts or where these open uh, holes were for the bumper mounts, we have to make a plate to contain, you know, to seal up everything anyway. But we're just going to just do some rough cuts, put it down inside here, and just, you know, put the bar there just to see what it's going to look like. And, uh, and try and figure this hillbilly stuff out. That's gonna be tight. <laughs> oh, needs to come down more. Okay. So that's kind of where I want to do it, right there. Then make the pa patches go right inside here. But that's uh, that's good. It's on there. So let's throw the bumper and let's see what see what that looks like. Now that's straight. All right, let's bring in the fenders and see if we can uh, match up the fenders with the uh, with the side of the um, uh, bumpers and get these things squared away so they're nice and straight and they'll be nice and level. See what I'm trying to do is put it right on the edge or right where the crease is. I want to show you something before I clamp down this. I am, this is exactly equal right here. This is straight up and down. This thing curves down so you can just for the process of these uh, fenders. This is what you might run into. Don't be worried about it because I just figured it's just the, the, the lovely quality of these fenders for the price that they ask. I mean, you know, if they were a hundred bucks, I wouldn't care. Let's, uh, now that we got everything fitted, it's not going anywhere this width. I mean, we can do a little bit of play in the bottom, but not much. Now let's try and fit the bumper. Okay, now we can move it around and see how it fits. And not that great. <laughs> this thing is going upwards like this. I have to make it flat. So I'm gonna have to uh, shave some of this down here and shave some of the bumper or put that pipe in. So let me just get on to doing that. Now I think we have to uh, um, slice the ends so we can get it down because if we push this in here like this, this is almost virtually flat and it's against the bar. So that is good. What we have to do now is trim the sides in order to make them, uh, make the sides fit flush with the actual quarters. Here, check this out. If I bring it underneath here where this actually is at the very, um, base at the top part and if I and if you look down here in order to bring this to make this flat the way a, a regular bumper should let me just we got the handy dandy scribe right here so we're putting it flat against there this is flat this uh, this is what I'm going off of if you take a look look at how much we have to trim off of this thing this is <laughs> wow that's crazy and it goes right into here. And you can see there's an indentation. It looks like the bumper, but they just flared it out. Um, so let me go uh, get the whiz wheel, the uh, air tool, and let me in my air respirator on, and let me go uh, zip that out. Let's see how, if I can do that, let's see if this thing becomes straight, because that's what we need to do. We need it to become straight, and we'll fit everything else that way.
the bumper is basically trimmed at this point. And what we want to do is we want to get something up here to mount that we can actually sit the bumper on and then we can move it in and out and see exactly where this bumper, because you can see there's no structure right here and where we actually need that to clear. And then we're going to start trimming all the metal to make it actually flow into one, uh, one actual trunk pan to actually make it look decent. And the biggest thing is when you're making something is how much metal you trim off then weld in and just you know make it look like make it look right. So what I am going to use is some more of the scaffolding like we use for the uh, uh, rockers. Just you know just some of the angle iron that's cut up and when I was doing this I'm sitting there going well I need to do it this I need to have it sit here and and I, and I drew a line and what I did do is I put this up and going wow I can put it right here and it's almost exactly on that line but I also have movement up and down you know four, three or four millimeters either side <laughs> and I don't have to weld anything so I can just bolt it on and the only thing I did is I, I got some screws and I need to cut up one more piece of the uh, angle that I got so I'll have three of them across here two on the outside and one you know or actually one probably put you know two and or three or one two or whatever whatever it's going to be um, I'll have one here in the middle and uh, actually I might go get a longer piece and just put this one right here but I actually need to cut this in half in order to uh, you know be pretty much the same size as this so yeah just have to do it It's all trimmed right here. This is, I mean, this is pretty good flat work. I mean, it goes along this line and it actually comes flat right out just with those bolted in, those uh, sport brackets. What I got to do next is to start taking all these toolbox trays and trimming it and trying to bring in the, the quarters. Everything I need to just kind of suck in is what I need to do. You know, um, this is actually down just a hair from where I want it to be. I mean, it's pretty much right on the corner, but there. Actually, that's exactly where I want it to be. And actually, this thing still fits in pretty good. So we'll start trimming up the uh, trays and trimming up all the old bodywork just to get rid of it, uh, just to lessen the amount of metal that's inside there. Then we're going to suck it all in and weld it all up to hopefully make it flow and, and make it actually look like it was supposed to be there instead of just having a bunch of old toolbox trays. <laughs> hey, what'd I do? Fix rust? I fixed it with toolbox trays. They were free. Hey, give me a break. I'm getting it done. <laughs> um, let's get move on to that, all right? Got the walder out. Uh, I'm going to be tacking in that box right there or that tool tray. What I did now is I want to uh, match up the tool tray as best I can so I took a piece of wood and brought the rear lower valence up it's, it was just bent down just had to push it up to equal it and well, I'm going to bring you into the uh, boot or trunk or whatever you, whatever you want to call it and show you my thought processes of how and where I'm going to weld it just so we're now going to start taking all the metal out of the toolbox trays and actually make it into look like a floor so it doesn't look like a bunch of toolbox trays, you know? I mean, the big thing about recycling all this garbage is to make it look cool at the end and not have it look like garbage. So <laughs> let's leap into action. Here is the bar that's uh, supporting the lower part of the bumper. This is going to be a tube that will go up to the strut tower and uh, pretty much hold this support as a back hit. And remember, the one that's going to be from here to there is uh, the tow hook. And so it's basically triangulated. It should be fairly strong. But what we need to do, that over there, is to get this toolbox tray situated to where I can get all the, uh, uh, this welded up into this section and to make it look halfway decent. What I'm going to do here is... I have it tacked in in three places, right, right there, there, and there. I'm going to cut those out, but i got to first mark with the pen how I'm going to cut this. Now, what I want to do is I have about, you know, an inch and a half over here, and I'm going to run that a line right there so I can slide the toolbox right in and weld it right to that part of the chassis. Over here, I have the toolbox is uh, at a right angle, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it 
where I put the uh, well, uh, where I put the weld, slice it a little bit inset into the toolbox, also back here, and bend it up and fold this lip flat. So it'll actually, I'll gain at least an inch and a half, two inches of actual length of the actual material. So I can put it onto this and weld it and it'll be, it'll, it won't follow the curve perfectly, but it should follow the curve at least somewhat. <laughs> it's just, it, it, it'll just be somewhat there. Now, let me first mark that up and I'll move the camera over so you can see that. really close. Here's the thought processes on doing these toolbox trays. First thing, what we're trying to do here is to make this metal as, as, as you can see, as flush as possible. So this is going to be my first welding point. My second welding point will be over here. You can't probably see, um, but I'll, in, I'll set the camera up so you can see exactly where I'm welding. It'll be one, two, then I'm going to push this back, weld right here, then take the uh, whiz wheel or die grinder, whatever you want to call it, cut to make this metal actually match. So it's not overlapping. Even though an overlapping joint is stronger, I'm just going to have it basically sit and be a butt weld. So they're butt together, and I'll weld that up. I'm not gonna, you know, not gonna weld everything. Then we can start cutting up this center tray to make it fit into this bottom tray. So let me just weld this up, and we'll just get this stuff done. With. We have here the toolbox uh, tray lid right here. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure this goes all the way to here. Whether or not we can bend this down or not, so we need to bring as much metal back here so I can fold it over and just slice it and just build in this area. So that's going to be a fairly simple thing. Just cut it roughly here because we're not going to use any of this. Then we're going to cut, you know, we'll cut this off and we're going to lower the pan at an angle. You know, we're going to cut back through here. So it'll be like a ramp that goes down to allow the uh, hoses for the intake for the fuel pumps just to, you know, to ramp down. So let's just cut that and I'll show you. Well, I'm going to cut this so we can fold it over. Then we'll cut down through here just to make the ramp to go down to the fuel pumps. This is the base of where it'll where it goes upward. So this is what I kind of want to do. I want to cut it back here, and where this is the uh, side of the toolbox plate. I want to cut that back the same way and ramp it from there. This thing I got to cut here so I can fold it over, and then we can bring this down. The uh, wood block underneath here to give it support, so it won't. So when you tap it without a wood block, what will happen is it just bounce around. Grind this up, grind this right here, and we'll put a tack right there. This sets our our uh, lower trunk or lower boot, uh, whatever you want to call it. It basically sets it. It's not finished because we have to clean everything up. I'll probably, you know, for the most part, I'll probably sandblast or grind. I'm not really sure, but I'll probably sandblast it. But we just need to get this. I can go underneath and then cut it after I get this thing jacked up in the air. But we just need to get the basic premise of the trunk um, set up so it'll feed into the fuel pumps and it's all right there and it takes care of the, the big, huge rust holes. So let's uh, get that squared away. I think I need a tack right there to hold everything up to be in position with this right down here. Yeah, I think that's the way to go.
This is down, that kind of broke, I had to redo this. I gotta cut this right here. I'm only gonna cut it like at an angle, so I can just flop it over, no worry, no, no big deal. We gotta work over here to the uh, battery box side of it. Leaving the pipe in, then we gotta figure out where the other, uh, where the mounts go and how they're going to go. Okay, this is the battery tray. We need a fairly wide, I wanna, I'm probably gonna use a fairly big size, big battery, because you also have to consider you're going to use the uh, battery box to conceal all the gases and so forth, or conceal it from a rollover. Inevitably, it's always a safer thing to do. What, now, we have the bar. It's just sitting in here roughly where it's gonna go. So we need this, almost this full section, as a battery tray because the battery box is rel you know you can get them in any size but the one i'm probably going to put in here is going to be almost exact fit uh for this so what i need to do is to uh go down here and i want to uh bend up the lip actually what i want to do is just weld it right here i just want to weld this thing in place to right here uh maybe a couple of tacks over here that it gives a generally set up we have to lift the car up well we don't have to lift the car up but i don't want to lie on my back and cut this thing and fold the metal up inside of it that's pretty much you know the wherewithal with that then we can clean it up but um i want to get that thing done first uh i have to i'll, I'll set this up so this is level with that and i want to cut this bend it over cut that bend it over just to give us the you know it's still the rough section but it's the rough finished section if you understand what i'm saying it's the and that way we can move on to building the plates for the sides and putting in the bars because i don't know how i'm going to plate inside here it all depends on how i'm going to do this whether or not i'm going to run another bar or a tube down there same thing over here that's it's kind of up in the air but that's the whole reason why we're going back and forth back and forth to fit everything so let's uh um I'm going to uh, tack this in, and then we're going to move to the uh, bar or to the side plates for the top of the mounts because that's going to dictate where the bar that's going to be on this is up there. So let's first uh, get this done, and I'll tack. work got pretty much it where I want it to be the positioning that's the main thing it's you know it's tacked in it's you know stitch welded here and there just for you know for stability this is the this is the final dimensions that I want not the final finished product but the dimensions same thing over with the battery tray box the the dimensions for that actual battery tray is done what we got to do now is fit the tie bars or the strut boxes for the strut tops to uh, actually attach the lower and upper halves of the Coupe GT and the uh, 4000 Quattro. We'll do that, set the other bars, and after that, that'll be the end of that episode because we got to move down and forward <laughs> next in order to start making other things fit. I hope that sounds right. So let's uh, go there and do that, uh, you know, those things for the struts. Now we have here, this is a pedestal of a drafting table. It's like, you know, there was like a rectangle within a rectangle that you hit a linear actuator and it lifts the drafting table up. That's what it is. That's why you get them free, you know, because nobody uses them anymore. They're all on computers. What I am planning on using it for. Well, we first have to take this, you know, bar off. That's no problem, just a couple cuts. Then we have to cut pretty much a section this and section there and what I'm going to do is have on one side of the section uh, when I take the uh, the quarters off I'm going to weld both sides of the or the top and the bottom of the uh, A2 to keep you know them together I'm just going to weld them onto this then weld everything to the shock tower that's pretty much its only its only function right now but we also need to uh, bend the ends in and box it and you know make it look all cool 
you know, let's do some more recycling. Let me cut this up. What we're doing with this is seven and a half inches. I'm just going to basically cut straight down. That's all I'm going to do because I'm going to use one cycle um, for the left and one side for the right. First thing off, we have, I don't want to go with uh, things over there, but we had a strut tower here, and I grabbed the largest hole saw, I think it's three, three and a quarter, I don't know. But it's basically going to drill a hole in that sheet metal, or the one that's over there, roughly right here. The reason why I have three and a half is because I, you know, once it's here, as you can see right there, I can move it around a little bit and adjust it because I'm not going to get it exact. I mean, this whole car is not exact. I mean, in for the most sense. Uh, it's a labor of uh, trying to get things done and actually finishing the project. That's the main thing. So, have this here, and we're going to figure out where to bend all the all the wires. Just, I mean, the, um, the plates over there. I got the other plate for this one here, but I didn't want to have it on here to show you what I wanted to do with the whole saw. I'm going to finish up this coffee, and then we're going to get right into chopping these suckers up. How's that? <laughs> Let's go see what it looks like. Sweet. See? Right there. That's my plan. So I can push it back in more and just wall it around the front tower. Let's go to the other side. Oh. Start cut, trying to figure out where to uh, where to slice it. This is where we're going to bend this down to contact the top of the wheel well. Because we're not going to use all this. We're going to we're probably going to cut most of this stuff out. We're only going to have a half ridge here. I don't want it fully around. Um, and then we're just going to go over to this side because we don't need that much. We're just boxing everything in. But we need the extra material from here down so we can figure out what we need to cut and what we don't need to cut. So it's going to go up like that, down. We're going to take the uh, die grinder. I'm going to cut right here. We're going to make a, a scribe mark right there. And that way we can bend it down nice and easy. Let's go over to this side and I'll show you what I'm going to do here. On this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a scribe line that goes to right about here. As you can see, this area is what we have to fuse together. And the only way I can see about doing it is to make a scribe line from there to about right there. Make that scribe line so we can bend it down and start cutting off everything. I wanted it to go. <laughs> There's a triangular base. Let's see what we need to lock off here. happy it's it's looking pretty good but I got to get my grinder wheel out or put the grinding wheel on the grinder and instead of the cutting wheel and start grinding stuff but before I do that I'm going to take this other one out right 
here. And what I'm going to do is that this got to be a mirror image. And it was just like that. So what I'm going to do is cut everything right here with the, with the uh, cutting wheel out. This is just about to fall off too, so. Now we have to test, uh, now we have to actually fit the plate and fit the plate to the chassis, to the bottom part of the chassis, then, then tack it into here. As you can see, I have everything away and this thing fall off and eh, whatever. So I have to drop this thing down. See, it's on the actual wheel well. So I need to look at it right here and go, well, it has to be roughly from here to roughly here. I need to just, just take just little arcs, small, small arcs of metal out. I have at least a, a centimeter to play with, so I could take a lock out and still have enough metal down there to weld. So let me just, uh, uh, Grab the grinder because I put the grinding wheel on it and we will get this thing done. Here's the uh, plate that I'm going to weld in and I ground this off and ground this and I'm sitting there going, hmm, I need to get a much more stable platform. So what I did besides grinding the back, I ground on the inside and I took a grinder and ground all this stuff down uh, for, to clean metal. What it is, is that we're gonna have a welded point of contact here. A welded point of contact, well, if you wanna look right there, and a welded point of contact here. Once that is all welded, that way I can go in back, you know, take the quarter off, go in back, pound it down with a drift or you know a body hammer and then weld the rest of that metal to this. Is it overkill? Yeah, it's overkill. Would it make does it make me feel better? Absolutely. I'd much rather have overkill. What's an extra couple of ounces of weld, <laughs> you know, compared to, you know, you, I mean, it might be stupid but cracking the bond up on the rear, on the quarters. It's <clears throat> You know, I'd much rather have a little bit of more weld, would be less chance of cracking and stress, you know, cracking the uh, uh, bondo on the quarters from having this and that shift in place. That's, that's the biggest thing. So let me get on to, let me get on to the welder and I'm just gonna start tapping this in, you know, so it's all gonna be squared. And I'm gonna take this plate off, just like this plate fell off, basically. But I'm gonna take this plate off with the grinder, because I was gonna weld it anyway. Same thing with the other one, so it'll give me access in here so I can weld everything up. And I think it'll look okay. <laughs> let's, do it, let's do it. Now that the dust died down. Whew, next step, we gotta make this rear bar fit. And I'm looking at it going, there's gonna be a couple things we're gonna have to put into this. We're gonna have to put in a place, you know, to mount the spare tire, mount the battery. We gotta put the fuel cell in, I mean the uh, fuel tank back in. We gotta mount that because I'm looking at the bars and I'm wondering whether or not I just changed my plan again. Not, the, not this bar, not for the bumper. The bumper's square, I like that. But how the, the bars that I have are going to make it fit, 
and actually be, um, how can I put this, very useful as in crash protection and also I can do it for the seat mount. I mean the uh, spire tire mount and the, you know a place to hold down the battery box and it all has to fit. And I'm looking at it going, well, <laughs> I'm making this shit up as I go along. So, hey, listen, I'm going to end this episode. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you hanging out and seeing my trials and tribulations. And, and just remember to learn shit that I screw up on. You know, you can do it. I'm just a recycling hillbilly. No problem. You know, and I'm trying to do it all with like angle grinders and cheap junk that you can buy, you know. Uh, that's about it, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I gotta put my thinking cap on how to do this. So next time we're gonna finish up the trunk section of this, and, or the boot section. We're gonna mount the fuel cell and figure out where everything's gonna be and tie it in. After I think a little bit. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day.